Hi, and welcome to this session from Knowledge Base. Today I'm talking about 5G networks. Before I start, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed, and please hit the bell, but bell notification so you get notified whenever I have a new video. Today, in my session, I will try to answer what is a 5G network, and I will try to explain also how frequency and the bandwidth and the range the coverage range, the physical range of a cell relate to each other. So we can explain or so we can understand uh, the relation uh, between these three aspects and the difference between different generations of cellular networks. Uh, then I'll talk about uh, 5G applications. Where do we see 5G in the future and today? Uh, why 5G today? Why now? And what what is next? And then finally, I will just answer the question if 5G is safe. Let's get going. So what is 5G? 5G, as it says, it's the fifth generation technology standard for cellular networks. And it's the successor of 4G. Uh, what 5G offers more is uh, a higher bandwidth mainly than 4G, so we can achieve bandwidth of 10 gigabits per second with 5G. Now keep in mind that this is a bandwidth or a speed that will not be available to every user and everywhere. However, this is an achievable uh, bandwidth by 5G. And we'll see later more details in the presentation. Now, because of this high bandwidth uh, that 5G can offer, 5G sometimes or could be seen as a replacement of the last mile cable for internet service providers. So today, if at your home or at your business you have a cable uh, connection uh, providing you with internet services, uh, later on, if we have um, a reliable and stable 5G network in your area, you could uh, replace the cable by a direct wireless service from your service provider. However, till today, even that 5G has been out for more than two years, uh, we don't see this happening. Um, 5G also opens the door for many IoT applications uh, like smart factories, Industry 4.0, same thing, but uh, smart city infrastructures and and many more things. Um, autonomous driving also could benefit from 5G, or smart cities, smart traffic. So the options are endless. And now while we see a lot of uh, devices connected to the network, uh, definitely 5G is a need for these IoT applications. Now let's go and look at frequencies, uh, coverage range, and bandwidth. Um, how does this work together? And to explain this, I will take an example and uh, go through it step by step. So let's take we have like this village here that we want to cover with a wireless service. Okay, just a wireless service. And one option to do that is to place one base antenna in the center of the village on a high altitude point close to the village. And then if I'm using a low frequency, uh, I can cover up to tens of kilometers in range and I can offer a low bandwidth to the users in this village. So this would be one option. And uh, this is a very economical option. I need only one main fiber link to the base antenna. However, my number of users will be limited based on the channels that I have available in my antenna. So the number of users that can use this service at the same time will be limited because I have limited uh, channels in my uh, frequency band I can support. Now, another option is to offer multiple base stations with a higher frequency offering also a higher bandwidth. So if I increase the frequency of the wave that I'm using, I'm using shorter waves, means higher frequency, and then I can have higher bandwidth, but at the cost of the cell size. So we reduce the cell, we increase the frequency, and we can offer a higher bandwidth. Now with 
this option I would need much more uh, investment in the infrastructure so I would need seven fiber links to connect all my base station however I will also be able to offer the service to a larger number of users because now I can reuse the frequencies in the different cells and I can reuse the channels in different cells so as I multiply the number of base stations I also can multiply the number of users that are using my service at the same time similarly I can go for a an even higher frequency and reduce further the size of the cell so I have much more cells covering smaller areas in the village and offering eventually a high bandwidth to the user. Uh, now, in this case, my infrastructure investment is even much higher. So I have over 30 fiber links. I didn't count the circles, but maybe I have 35, 37 uh, base antennas needed to cover the same area so I need a big investment to make to have a fiber cable coming to each base station uh, however I can serve a much bigger number of users now in every cell I can have I can have the same number of users and because of the complexity of the infrastructure it will take a long time to implement so definitely for a user if you have such a infrastructure in place a service provider would offer a much better service however to reach the, this point it takes more time and more money to be invested in the infrastructure now if we look at 5g uh, 5g offers a wide range of frequency bands that can theoretically cover all these three ranges and we will look at them in the following slide so 5G has three defined bands, a low band 5G, which uses 600 to 850 MHz uh, uh, frequency. And this is similar to the 4G uh, frequency or the frequency used by 4G. And it can also cover uh, the same range and it's up to over 20 kilometers per uh, cell. We also have a mid-range that uses frequency 2.5 to 3.7 gigahertz and a high band uh, 5G which uses frequency up to 39 gigahertz. But remember, with these frequencies, the concept that we discussed before that the higher the frequency, the smaller the cell is, the higher the bandwidth you can offer. And that's how 5G or 5G service providers can make use of three of these three bands to offer their services in different locations and we will talk about each one so for the low band 5g uh, the speed or the bandwidth that is offered is between 30 or 250 megabits per second and it have the same coverage range as a 4g tower and then and that's as i said it's over 20 or 25 kilometer uh, range and and here will, it will be offering almost the same service as the 4G. In the mid-band 5G, the 2.5 to 3.7 gigahertz, here 5G can reach speeds of 900 megabits per second, which is considered a very good service for today's requirement. Uh, now for each uh, cell tower, it can provide the service for several kilometers in radius, which, which, which is also acceptable. So in an example of the village that we saw before, we can serve the village in two or three antennas, uh, say, and we cover the village and the areas around it. Now, this is, uh, this is good. And most of the implementations of 5G are starting from the mid-band and up because we have already 4G so usually or what we see that the service providers are not investing in the low band the 5G only in mid band 5G or higher now the high band 5G offers 25 to 39 gigahertz of frequency and with this high band you can achieve download speeds of over 1 gigabits per second 
but again, it have a limited cover coverage range. Uh, another disadvantage is that it's easily blocked by uh, walls, uh, windows, and any obstacle or trees. So if you're using your phone and you turn a corner or you go under or behind a tree, you will feel that there is you either lose the service or there is a degrade in the level of service. Now, as we saw in the previous examples, implementing such a high band service requires a lot of investment in the infrastructure. And that's why we are not saying this high band 5G implementation in, uh, in many places. However, this is a good solution for stadiums, for sport arenas, for uh, exhibition halls, or exhibition centers where you have a high number of users at a small uh, geographical area or at a limited space. You can study this location, which is an open location, and place your 5G antennas and provide the service. And this is where we see high band 5G services. Now let's have a look at the applications of 5G. So there has been three applications defined for 5G, which are the enhanced mobile broadband, the ultra reliable low latency communication, URLLC, and the massive machine type communication, the MMTC. If we look at the enhanced mobile broadband, it's a progression of the 4G cellular communication system. We're just offering higher speeds and higher capacities of the mobile phone as we know today. It's not just a mobile, it's a mini computer in your hand, so you can use it to do your calls. But we all know that now our secondary use of the mobile is to call. Our main use is to check our social media, to send emails, to check emails, and to be connected to the world. So this is the first application and it continues what we have now with 4G cellular system. Uh, second application is the ultra reliable low latency communication. And this is for mission critical applications that require uninterruptible and robust data exchange. And honestly, we did not see this yet. I don't know of any application where this is used yet. However, in the future, when we have a reliable uh, infrastructure for 5G, we could see this in uh, medical applications or from mobile medical applications uh, or transportation uh, applications. The third, and I think the most valuable uh, for today's industry or technological advancement is the massive machine type communication, the MMTC. And here where 5G can connect uh, too many nodes and devices uh, supporting IoT applications. Um, and here we, we've, we've seen uh, or we've heard a lot of talk about IoT and seen a lot of implementation of IoT and uh, different approaches to, to manage these devices that need to be connected. Being in a smart building or a smart infrastructure, smart city infrastructure, whatever, you need to have devices connected to the internet. So we've seen the single pair ethernet for wireless connection. And if you want, you can check a video about uh, single pair ethernet. I'll put a link up. You can check what is single pair ethernet, but it's still wireless connection. Once you do it, flexibility is limited to move devices around. SPE, single pair ethernet offers a cheaper alternative of uh, wired connectivity, which is but is still wired. However, with 5G, you have the flexibility of placing your devices anywhere in the building or in a city and still be connected to the network. You can change them at any time and still be connected. They could be mobile IoT devices that are moving around the city, uh, collecting data. And so the options are endless here with 5G supporting IoT applications. Now I'll go to the next question and why 5G now and what is next? So 
if you have been following or if you look at the history of mobile communication, you will see that every 10 years, almost every 10 years, we had a new generation of communication. And this is related to the requirements and needs of the technology advancement. So in 1G, we had only analog communication. 2G, we had digital communication with text messaging. At 3G, we had more data over our phone. We started seeing application like uh, Uber tracking, uh, maps, guidance over the phone. And in 4G, we started seeing even higher bandwidth video streaming, live streaming from our mobile phones and with 5G now we need high speeds of internet, we need HD videos, high definition videos, we need IoT applications and, and that's why we see 5G now. 4G has been out for around 10 years so it was the time for 5G and now if we look what's next I can tell you that we are looking to see 6G soon in the future. Some people are saying that or expecting that 6G will not take 10 years. We start to see a lot of companies investing or researching 6G, but this is not an indicator it will come sooner because also when we look at 5G, it started more than 10 years back. We started hearing about it in the industry, but until we see it, it's it took 10 years. Now, nobody knows what the future hides, but yeah, things are coming faster as we go towards the future and we could see 6G soon. Now, coming to the final question and uh, to the question that I think at the time when 5G started to come out was a real big question, even for governments, many places in, in Europe, uh, the parliament members and the governments were worried and afraid about 5G. But if you just remember what I've just explained about frequencies and the frequencies we are using, 5G is not much different than what we are used to in frequencies. So 5G is safe. Most of the frequency bands used by 5G are same like the frequencies currently used by 4G and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So we're using same frequencies. And if you are afraid of the power of these frequencies, um, you shouldn't be because the power of this wave that is coming out of the base station is too weak to cause any harm. So your wireless access point at your home or your phone that you carry around because of the proximity to you has more power than the base stations and these antennas. So unless you are sleeping beside the antenna with you in the same room or in the same bed, then you should not worry about the effect of the waves on your health. That's it for today and for this session. I want to thank you for staying with me, with me till the end. Please uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will be back with more sessions in the future. Thank you.